some cute poses. But I have a question for you guys about the last season. We should probably discuss a little bit here. Uh, I read up some discussions that some of the game characters in the last season seemed poor. My complaint was primarily with the uh, game rates, which were mm -hmm. a nice joke, but they kind of seemed a little bit shallow as a joke. Mm -hmm. and then, <laughs> it really wasn't that shallow in the end, was it? Ah, so the question is, do you feel that any of that has been worked or do you think that Poland has been great development? And by the way, I love Madame Bastard. They deserve their own feel. Madame Bastard is awesome. <laughs> You know, like the, there's a little couple in. Uh, um, no, 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 not gridlock. That's that's a good one. But I thought they were good. I thought that was a good one. Yeah. Um, it was the it was the two boys in the the wasp episode. Um, you know, and, and it was like you didn't really see much of it except for like when they're all like sticking their heads out to see what's going on in the hallway at night. You know, and then the, the blonde boy sticking his head up underneath the other boy. And it was like, oh, that's cute. That episode felt very awesome. It felt like. Tend to be a classic episode in the world. It was a very, I, I don't know what I'm looking at. I love it, but I don't like it. But it's a bit bright there. What was that? Going to the old thing with bright there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 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 That was, I was shocked. I like the voice. Oh, yeah, I did too. Yeah, they can show you how to see. The wasp was cracking. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Sure, absolutely. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Oh, 
from your fanboy standpoint, what do you think Jack did with the doctor's hand? <laughs> Sexual and not like starfish. All right. <laughs> so if we're going to, if we're going to accept um, sexual identities, 
like bisexual, pansexual, omnisexual. Mm -hmm. um, we need to also accept that asexual is something too. Great, thank you. <laughs> um, I mean, I realized at, at a point that there was something that got that turned me on. I uh, married him. <laughs> He's yeah. bisexual. Um, but anyway, I wanted to just say that about asexuality. Now, um, on the forum, there was a lot of discussion always about Doctor Who, and they would always be talking about it. This was about the time when Tenet was on, and so, you know, a lot of them were really freaking out when he started kissing people. They're like, oh my gosh, our hero is not asexual anymore. Right. But the thing is that, you know, I mean, really, if you are asexual, you can kiss people. I mean, you just aren't interested in sexual intercourse, usually that's the thing. So, anyway, just a little update on that. That's a great point. <laughs> Yeah, that's 
species thing um, in the end of the world, Eggleston was totally flirting with the tree girl. So, right. yes. yeah. I mean, it's, it's like she uh, wasn't that much of a stretch. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Captain Jack flirted with the grasshoppers. Yeah. 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 Right. But, I mean, the, especially Eggleston's flirting with like, everything. Yeah. Plus some jacket for him to buy. He was right. a pretty part. So. Yeah. I mean, the doctor can get out there if he wants to. He doesn't do another one. Get out there. So you keep your
them not to do that. Yes, sir. Hello, Ryan. It's very near. 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 It's very he obviously has the only two for us. Are we going to still consider him time lord? No. He's not. Yeah. Yeah. He's half time lord. I thought that's right. Yeah. They, they specified that the episode was half time lord. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> River is more time lord than him, apparently. Apparently, so, yeah. Right. So, we yeah. were still just saying that he's still the doctor. And he has feelings for us. Okay. He was the doctor. So, you can't really say he's yeah. still the doctor. Even though he's the former doctor. That he can, that he's asexual, if we can, if that those feelings are being put into the Okay. There you go. So my takeaway so is, if you have a whole lot of stuff here, one part, it's easy to love somebody, but if you've got two, that just screws it all up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like two days of both. Right. There you go, third doctor, you go. And then he could move on to whatever because, you know, you give the human mother and die and whatever. And then, you know, this is, so the human doctor has at that point the feelings for Rose, whereas Rick, real doctor can have feelings for other people, other things. Good answer. <laughs> Somebody asked her a question about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 She spoke for the family. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, on the flip side, though, if you think about it, because um, part of the clone there, the hand clone, is that it's actually, in a way, to think about it, it's an offspring of Donna and the dog. Because it's a hand crisis resulting from both. So the emotional side of it, because if you even think about it in the river and the current doctor romance, yeah, I, I've seen dictionaries that are more romantic. Yeah, so yeah romantic. I, I was going to say yeah. Yeah. romance. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, I think they're so, so, it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. Exactly. The, the other thing I was going to add, just building off the comments earlier about uh, uh, Chris Eppler, um, he just came right after his entire species had been wiped out. Wouldn't you be warning his little rabbit too? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
It was incredibly creative. Absolutely. Uh, pterodactyl. Uh, so is that actually the pterodactyl we worked with? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's their love title. Yes. I just wanted to ask because I'm 
you guys watch Downton Abbey? Yeah. It's fun. It's been fun to see my favorite characters like kind of play over. And do you know Lord Grantham? Do you guys know, you know mm -hmm. the pirate? Yeah, 
know much about the Algerian sexuality. And uh, it would be nice to see a same-sex companion with a doctor. Mm -hmm. I just want to point out that in humans, XY is a male. But that's not true of all species on this planet. So we don't really know what gender the doctor is. And maybe if we have had same-sex companions all the time. Yes. Like, like companions that travel in the dark or companion companions? <laughs> <laughs> well, he has had male companions in the past, but never just a doctor and a male companion. But he's always been here. Huh? But he wasn't, he was always with other. He was always too serious and alone. Wait, 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 one at a time. I think he suggested that the doctor himself may possibly actually be female and be the female equivalent. I know Highlander, Jamie and the Doctor were alone, and then I think in the very next one before they brought in Elizabeth. Or no, 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 because no. uh, Ben and Polly continued on after uh, Highlander. Did they? Yeah, they they left. They left, they left uh, like six stories later in the Faceless ones. Okay. Yeah. Right. So so Jamie never travels except for in the two Doctors. Yeah. In 86. But technically Nicole Bryant was there, so. Right. But sure. Yeah, exactly. So, so anyways. I, I have a point I want to make after these two first two gentlemen. Oh. Well, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a question from the audience that was texted. Did this may have already been addressed in the time that it took me to get up here. And, <laughs> <laughs> the, thing that, the thing about it is I'm kind of over there in the sonic dead zone. Ah, gotcha. uh, so I couldn't hear. Uh, he was talking about uh, the origins of Gallifreyans and how it was proximity to the TARDIS that mm -hmm. made them, and that was at its, it, like I said, it may have been already brought up, but in A Good Man Goes to War, she specifically says that it was proximity to the time vortex that caused the Gallifreyans to become Gallifreyans. And spoke with authority that seems to indicate that either she knows what she's talking about, but what she or the, I forget what race it is. Oh, Kaveria? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She, she says specifically that it was proximity to the time vortex that made them time lords. Um, or the untempered schism, I'm sorry. What? Right. Um, wasn't that what it ended up to, that could just be like what, to regenerate or the time capability? Well, it wasn't necessarily like what made them Gallifreyans. It was like they were Gallifreyans before and then well, they, I mean, obviously they were Gallifreyans. Right, and then what they... Saying, they what I'm saying is, you know, he was, he was saying that, that, you know, being near the TARDIS, gave River her regenerative ability to make her part tribe lord and that we've already we've already got an in canon example of somebody saying yes definitely that's what caused at least some change in the time at some point. Does River have two hearts? No, she's here. Yeah. Well, but I mean three three like we don't know. Right. We don't know. Maybe very interesting. Yeah.
Well, and also, uh, since the river apparently can help control or generate yeah. some well, she, she chose maybe Maybe she could have chosen to be in there. Okay, okay. My theory is that uh, Shiver Lords do have the ability to choose their regeneration if given the opportunity to. Yeah. And every time we see the Doctor regenerate, it's at a point of near death. And there isn't an opportunity to choose. Um, so we, we saw Ramana, and she went through, and you know, like with David Tennant, he had that 15 minute period where he could regrow a hand if he needed to. She went through this period where she modeled different bodies, and I think that that's part of I think that's the natural. The doctor's never had a natural regeneration. It's always been, I've lived in this body hundreds of years too long, or I've just been sentenced to death on trial, or I've been shot by a bullet, or I've been poisoned by something that I don't have an antidote for. He never has the opportunity to choose. Really sort of working. Right, right, right. Right, exactly. They, 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 they did, and he refused to take it because they didn't like the options. Well, so. I also think for her song, too, she wasn't raised on Yaku Frey. She doesn't even necessarily know how they work and how, what they do. You know, she was a child born and then taken away, raised by Kavarian, and then right. sent off in the By she's actually just as surprised. Yeah, exactly. Look at me. Right. Look how odd I am. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Um, actually, Ramana was born in Yaku Frey. Yeah. 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 You know, not only does he die, but his love dies with him. Even for a brief moment. And while it's maybe not the happiest for the rest of us, but we really love that character. It is such a Romeo and Juliet kind of feeling of store cross lovers. It was never meant to be. It was just impossible. And that's just the way that it ended up. And because Jack's help is happy, he will need to come back. He does. So to say that. Yonto's death somehow invalidates the positivity, the positivity of that relationship as is portrayed in canon is kind of short-sighted and possibly a little English and childish at the same time. When you look at the, the literature aspects of it, when you look at the overarching storyline, he is a complete love story as opposed to a user okay. and someone who tries to hurt. Right. Just overall, though. Uh, okay, hang on. We, 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 there is a panel in here at 11:30, so we do have to go. Um, so we can take this nobody's question, and that's going to be have to be it. But it has to be really quick, super quick. Oh, 